Hello, in today's q and I'm going to be talking all about pens. In my last video, I mentioned Lazy Nuzemi. I guarantee I will screw up that name at least three more times before this video is through. What it does is it's a stroke straightener that helps you get rid of wobbles in your strokes. It's a little app, it only runs on Windows, and it has a 30-day free trial, and after that's up, it costs $35, link down below. I'm going to be looking at this on the Surface Pro, however, if you have a drawing tablet that wobbles a little bit, it works great on that as well. I'm going to start by toggling off Lazy Nizumi. It's got a big on and off button so it's easy to toggle. I'm just going to draw a couple lines pretty slow just to show you how this pen looks by default as I'm drawing. Now when you first start using this application, it may seem overwhelming. There are a lot of settings, there's a lot of things that it tells you about that you can do. I am going to be looking at it though from the point of view of just trying to straighten out any wobbly strokes. It seems to be angled strokes where you see the wobble the most, which is why I'm doing it this way, because it's more pronounced. And there are three settings that I tend to use the most, and the first one I'm going to be looking at here is called Smoothing Subtle. Now in Photoshop on the surface, you're not going to see a, a ton of change here. In fact, as I draw these strokes, they're going to look very similar to the previous strokes. That's because this is a very subtle smoothing agent. On other tablets where you have just a little bit of jitter, this is going to work just fine. Here, I want a little more power. So another setting that I'm going to take a look at is called Smoothing Massive in the drop down. Now this is my favorite, it's probably the one that I use the most. Now as you can see as I'm drawing these lines, you can see some slight wobble. I usually don't draw this slow, so usually when I'm drawing I'm going a little faster and so this really kind of takes care of the problem for me. Now say you're a super duper slow drawer, you like really slow accurate lines. The one I would recommend there is called Speed Smoothing. I don't use this one too much. The reason I don't is because it has this string on it. As you can see that as I'm dragging, what I'm doing is I'm dragging that string along. If you're drawing really slow, it's easy to control that string. However, if you're drawing a little bit quickly, your lines can get a little bit loopy on the ends. So if you want a really good corner, it's a little bit harder to do that with this. If you're drawing slowly, you can you can manage that, but I do like drawing a little bit faster. There's other settings too, which also have the pulled string effect. You'll see that a lot on a lot of these lazy Nuzumi settings. And I think the reason I like the smoothing massive is that it has a little bit of delay underneath the pen, but not enough for me to notice in my day-to-day -day drawing. So it's a good balance between the line smoothing I'm looking for and the general responsiveness of the pen that I like. It's truly amazing as you dive into all these settings how deep you can go within this app. A lot of times when I do dive into the settings, I end up messing something up and the pen doesn't work the way I want it to. So oftentimes I just kind of ignore the general settings. But if you are a fiddler and you like to play around with that sort of thing, uh, th all that stuff is there. This is definitely a fiddler's paradise. Some other things that I haven't played with much are some scripting options, which lets you make some really funky looking lines. They have some neat little presets in there that you could jump in and play with and, and just kind of get a feel for that. So that is my lazy Nizumi primer and how I generally use it. Now by far the most common question that I got on my Surface Studio hands-on video was, hey, the human hand naturally wobbles, so how do I know there's actually a pen wobble on this thing? A lot of people wanted me to draw with the ruler, so here I am, drawing with the ruler. I'm using my Just Say No to Drugs ruler, which I single-handedly credit for saving me from a life of crime. And I knew when I mentioned this in the video that not everybody was going to like it because people were excited about the product, and when you say anything negative about a product they like, whether they've used it or not, they get upset. Oh, internet, you're so persnickety. And this is also one of those issues that I've covered before, and I'm never really sure how much time and energy in each video I should devote to it. I made a video about it after my Surface Pro 3 review, talking about it in depth and how it was driving me nuts. And a lot of people told me I was blowing it out of proportion and that they didn't notice it and that I was just slamming the product. And since I got so much negative feedback on that, I decided for my Surface Pro 4 review to just kind of play it down since it had been improved a little bit and I figured I'm the only person who notices the pen wobble. I just won't mention it. And lo and behold, a bunch of people commented on the review and said, why didn't you mention the pen wobble? It's still there. Gah! So this is one of those things that just comes down to personal preference. A lot of people, their art style, it, 
it just doesn't matter because they're either drawing too fast, they're using big brushes or painting or using shapes. Other people who do really delicate line work may feel that something like Lazy Nozumi hurts their accuracy a little bit or the responsiveness of the pen, and so they'd rather just have a more accurate tablet. So that's all I really have to say on the pen wobble for now. But what about other pen things? I've got other pen things. I got a video question from Rebel Pixels. And seriously, if you've never heard of Rebel Pixels and you like this channel, you should really check out his YouTube channel Channel, there is a linky down below in the description. Uh, I've been doing October all this month, and I've started experimenting a lot more with cross hatching in my line work. And I started trying to do that technique on the Surface Pro 3, and the Surface Pen just needs too much pressure before it starts registering a stroke, unlike a lot of the Huion and the uh, Wacom and all the other guys. Their pens seem to be much more sensitive on the low end for that. You had mentioned in your sketchable video, I really hope that app's called Sketchable and I'm not making something up. You had mentioned in your video for Sketchable, that you had problems with the ink being not sensitive enough. But the core of his question is about the levels of pressure you need on the Surface Pro Pen in order to start registering a mark. And on his channel, he's done several reviews. So he reviewed his Surface Pro, he's reviewed some other tablets. Uh, I think he's reviewed the same Artisol tablet that I have reviewed. But he's not sure he likes how much pressure he has to apply to start getting a mark with his pen. So I decided to, to test it out and look and see myself to see if I've noticed. The short answer is off the bat, I hadn't noticed until he brought it up. Specifically when I was cross-hatching, I didn't have any problem at all, especially looking at the problem that you had when you were cross-hatching, that, that just wasn't occurring for me. But I don't think it's the pen because even when I was using the Surface Pro 3 pen, if it was doing that to me, I would be flipping out. I was using it here in Photoshop, that was working the way I expected it to, and here I am again in Sketchable, and uh, it's working the same way there as well. Here I am drawing as lightly as I possibly can, basically just the weight of the pen, and it's not registering any marks on the page. And if I switch over and I, I apply a little bit of pressure, I can see that now it's starting to make a line. Okay, just for a little bit of fun, I plugged in the uh, Wacom Intuos tablet that I have sitting next to my desktop. And generally, I feel that when I'm just very basically pressing with it, it's not picking up the stroke on that either. So I'm not seeing that much of a difference between uh, what Wacom's Intuos is doing and what the Surface Pen is doing. He also mentioned that he is using the Surface Pro 3 pen and I have upgraded to the Surface Pro 4 pen. So there might be some differences there. I was gonna test my Surface Pro 3 pen. However, the battery has since died on me. And as a side note, did you know there was such a thing as a quadruple A battery? I was gonna test out on some other tablets, but unfortunately I can't test out my Artisol tablet on my Surface. Uh, there's like a driver conflict with the touch drivers on the Surface Pro screen and the Artisol tablet drivers. And I thought about testing out on my Mac, but then I realized I'm bringing a whole slew of new variables to that. You've got a new operating system, which means you have different drivers, which means you have different calibration, which is gonna throw off any test that you're looking to do. So overall, I didn't answer your question, Tommy, but it was still kind of fun to talk about anyway. Lastly, I wanna share a video from Adobe. They had artist Sid Weiler doing a demo of her drawing process at Adobe Max last week, and they set her up on the Surface Studio. I really like this video for a couple of reasons. One, Sid streams her drawing process all the time on Twitch, link below, so she's really good at talking, taking questions, and working at the same time. Believe me, this is a lot harder than it looks I have tried. Two, she goes through her entire illustration process with Photoshop, and she has set up the environment the way that she likes it. This is really good because most of the demos that I have seen with the Surface Studio, including my own, up to this point, are just people fiddling around in the store. And it, it's a good way to get a good, like, first impression, but the devil is really in the details on these sort of things. And third, she has a Surface Pro. She's used it a lot before, and so she is familiar with the whole environment, and she also even mentions the jitter and says it's not quite as pronounced on the Surface Studio. So go, go now, go check out that video. It's okay for you to leave me. I'm just gonna talk about Twitter and Patreon and comments from here on out. So if you have any comments, hit me up on Twitter or you can always let me know down in the comments. And if you enjoy these videos or find them helpful, consider contributing on Patreon. That's all I got for today. I'll see you guys later.